we had a break in the weather for a little bit. Right now the ground should usually have like a foot of frost on it, but we had a lot of warm weather and yesterday, for actually for the last couple days it's been above freezing. So there's no frost on the ground, so I'm gonna do this job. So you can see they got a nice view of the river here. So what we're doing is putting a new deck on. They had an existing deck of so the new deck is going to be 11 by 22. And it's going to go right here. So I almost wasn't going to bring a machine over because this is just really hard to get into because of this hill here. From here to the river, it's probably a 100 foot drop on 100 feet. So this is where the existing deck was. So here's some pictures of it. You can see that this deck wasn't built properly. There isn't even any spindles. It's pretty dangerous. It wouldn't normally be so dangerous, but in this spot, you're way up high and if you fall, it's gonna be a really bad thing. So you can see the frame was not built right at all. There's nothing about this that's safe or was built right. The posts weren't in concrete. They didn't have a footing. They didn't have anything. They were just resting in the ground. The whole thing was dilapidated. It was just ready to fall down. And this is a pretty dangerous area for something to fall down because you'd just keep rolling down the hill if you did. The only way I'm gonna make this work with my excavator is I brought some plywood and some wood so I don't tear up the grass. And I'm gonna to have to stay up top to dig the upper footings. And then I'll have to get down here somehow to, to do the lower footings. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. That's why I wanted to do it by hand, but right now it's just too cold to mess around with that. I just wanna get these footings as in as soon as possible. Once they're in, it's kind of like the pressure's off, but until then I just, I need to get them in. So the customer doesn't mind if I have to tear some of this rock wall down, and I will because there has to be a footing right there. So I'm gonna use Bigfoot footings, 24 inch wide, and they're gonna be four feet down so that the frost can't heave them. You don't have to do it like that, but whenever you're doing a deck that's somewhat questionable about its location and the danger of it, it's better just to make it right.
This is like the perfect jet skiing weather minus the cold, but actually it's the middle of January and it's probably 40 degrees right now. Birds are chirping everywhere. That river is smooth as glass right now, not a ripple on it. Beautiful. Waterfall sounds pretty good. So these sauna tubes on the top, they're only eight inches. And the reason is because I wanna just rest the girders right on them. So the girder beam carrying the joists is just gonna be doubled up. So I'll put a four by four post bracket on there. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna do 10 inch sauna tubes because I'm gonna have six by sixes coming up. And a lot of people argue you need like a 12 or 16 inch sauna tube for the six by sixes, but it's just not necessary. That's really only necessary if you're not using a footing on the sauna tube. If you're, if you're using a footing, you really just need minimum just for the six by six to rest on it like without sticking off the sides, that's all you really need. I have a trick that you can use sometimes to square things up. This thing produces a square line. It has one line that goes this way, one line that goes this way. So what you can do is, when this front row is lined up perfectly, which you just need a string for, then you run this laser down right into the center of both of those other sauna tubes. And then once this laser is right in the middle here, in the middle there, the line going this way is perfectly square. So then you can go down here, see it just shining right on the camera. So then you take this six foot level, you line it up until it's right at the laser. And you make sure the bubble's in the center, which See, so the laser is on, the bubble's in the middle. So now you know the bottom of this is exactly where it needs to be. Now this line I'm getting right now is just for a rough reference because I'm just, I need to dig still. Once the sauna tube's in there, then you can set this right on top of the sauna tube. You put a little piece of wood on top of the sauna tube and you can, you can see exactly where it needs to go. So that's a quick, easy way to do this without using batter boards.
So since they have this nice looking stone wall here, I don't do that type of work. I don't really do landscaping, but let me just see if I can try to make this look reasonable.
this stuff to warrant bringing a dump truck over. I just need like a scoop or two. So I'm just gonna put it in the back of my truck. I got some triplex down just so it doesn't get all over the place. I thought a big group of jets was going by, but I guess it's just this guy breaking the ice. It's actually going pretty fast for a tugboat. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm just trying to work with what I got here. In the middle, I put that little wider one. Over on that other side, there's just too much of a drop to really put anything. I kind of wanted to put another big stone there, but it's gonna take a lot of fill to do that. And I ran out of gravel, I ran out of sand. I don't really do landscaping, like I said. So this is just an attempt to make it look somewhat better. But really this whole area down here is all gonna need some topsoil. I'd rather not bring the gravel out because then it will kind of interfere with the lawn and then you'll have like rocks going into the lawnmower and stuff. So I'm just gonna tell them to get a load of topsoil in here when it gets warm. Right now you can't get topsoil. It's way too frozen because it's it retains moisture so much that it just freezes at the gravel yard. Even this crusher run was pretty frozen. So for the framing here, I got some cross bracing, some X's here, and got another cross member there. And then up here, I also have these diagonals. And then we also put some blocking in, some bridging as you would call it mid-span between the two so i put those little wings down there they're like a gusset plate because there's nothing stabilizing that so it can kind of teeter-totter You can see the girders are resting right on the sauna tubes with a one inch standoff. Let's see. So it's just about dark. Just getting things finished up here. Just trying to reorganize this wall here.
got these hurricane straps in here hurricane ties if you want to call it that and believe it or not that's because you you need a way to prevent uplift I know it's hard to believe a deck would have uplift but it does the code requires you to put those hurricane ties in there normally if you're attached to a house you can get away with just toe nailing in from the joist to the beam but when it's a freestanding deck by code you're not allowed to do that you have to use positive connection which would be like a metal plate there's different kinds of things you can use but these are just quick and easy so you also have to keep in mind with these decks that you have to have it strong enough to withstand the snow load in the area so the ground snow load in this area is about 50 pounds per square foot so it has to be designed to a minimum of that and there's 10 pounds of dead load in there too that you have to consider which is the weight of the lumber itself can't believe there's still geese around here I think they're kind of confused this year they don't know which way to go about a week ago I saw them all flying north I thought that was kind of strange for the middle of the winter <laughs> 